Hey guys, this is Martin and welcome back to our burp mini series around tips and tricks for the burp suite. And today I am going to explain in a bit more detail how um, the intruder works and more specifically the attack types of the intruder. So I got a lot of questions like, hey, what are the different attack types and things like that. So intruder is a tool to automate, to automate brute forcing, for example, right? Like, so if you have a username admin and then you want to brute force the password, you can supply a list and then it does all this automatically for you. There is serious limitations on the community edition. Um, so I highly recommend the pro edition and otherwise you can use free tools like Hydra and things like that. But more specifically, I want to talk about the different attack types. So attack type number one is sniper, right? And then, so it says here, the attack type uses a single set of payloads and one or more payload positions, right? So it places each payload into the first position and then each payload into the second position and so on. So what does that mean? So first of all, um, let's illustrate this here in a, in a text editor. So on, uh, payload so this is my payload so it's a single set of payloads and the payload is one two three four five six okay so this is my payload list for example in sniper specifically and what it does is if i for example choose vina and i say add so this is basically how you add a position right and then you would come over here to payloads and then payload set one there's only one payload set as you know right and then simple list and then you would put in one two three four five six here all numbers you can you can use this directly as as you please right but the point is that first try will be one right and then it will try two and then we'll try three and then uh, three and then four and then five and then six and then if i put a second payload position here right like something like this then it will do one two three four five six for vina it will not change the password at that point and then it will do one two three four five six for peter right like or for for that very rare rule and this is ba this is the the most basic attack right like usually you you only use one payload position like for example you used it you know the username the username is vina or you enumerated something and then you want to brute force that password then you would just use that payload position so that's that's the sniper effectively the battering ram is basically so what it says here this uses a single set of payloads so again only one payload set right and then it iterates through the payloads and places the same payload into all the defined positions at once so what does that mean um let me clear this here again and i would for example say this is payload position one and this is payload position two and once again i have a single set of payloads one two three four five six it would now put in the first round it will put one one then it will put two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, right? So this is what battering RAM is basically doing. And um, I, I don't really find it particularly useful. Um, there is like the sniper is useful. And what is also useful is the cluster bomb. And battering RAM, I don't really use, but this is just what it does. It takes a single set of payloads and puts it into all your defined positions at the same time. That's that's important. So let's head over to Pitchfork. So Pitchfork uses multiple sets, right? So this is more interesting. And there is a different payload set for each defined position up to 20, right? So the attack um, iterates through all the payload sets simultaneously. So this is important. Uh, so it uses the first payload from each set. So let, let me explain this in more detail. So you have payload set one here, and then you have payload set two, right? And say payload set two is A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Something like this. And so if, if, if I choose Pitchfork, right, and go over to payloads, you will see that I have two payload positions now, which I just explained, right? And what it would do is it would basically, on, on my first payload position, it would put the one, right, from payload set one. On the second one, on Peter here, or this example, um, on, on that second variable, it would put A. So it would send one A, and then it would send two B, three C. So instead of Wiener, three C. Instead of Wiener, um, in the next round, four D, five E, six F, right? So, so but it's, it's always taking, you know, um, those payload positions in parallel, 
basically. So one A, two B, so that, that there's, a, there's a relationship, right? So this is the pitchfork. And then the last one, which is the most extensive one, is basically the cluster bomb. So the cluster bomb, again, uses multiple payload sets, but the multiple payload sets, basically, it uses for example from payload one it uses the first one and then iterates through all the other ones of the second payload set so this is very very comprehensive so when would you use this when you have for example a list of usernames and a list of passwords and you want to go through all the different combinations so how would this look like in practice it would look like this so my first iteration would be 1a then it would be 1b then it would be 1c 1d and so forth right and then on the second iteration, it would use 2A, 2B. And as you can already see, 2C, this is creating a lot of requests, right? So it's, it may not be beneficial, um, especially, well, if you're facing up against rate limiting or something, then obviously this is not, this is not a good thing because you might be blocked after a few attempts. But what it's trying to do is basically taking a, a large user name, name list and a large password list and then try every combination with each other. So this is basically how cluster bomb works. So I hope this makes sense. This is and this clarifies a bit what the different type of attacks are. And I see you in the next video.